So I had a near-death experience 11 years ago. And the reason why I had the near-death experience was I was um, taking a class four narcotic diet pill at the time that was designed to um, be taken only for three months. And I took it for nine years. And what happened was um, it did a lot of damage to my heart and my lungs. And I got to the point where I wasn't, um, I was losing my breath constantly. I wasn't able to breathe. I wasn't able to get air into my lungs anymore. They weren't opening. And all of my organs started shutting down one by one in my heart. Um, I could feel it beating slower and slower. And I just, I would do things like jump up and down and I couldn't get any um, air into my lungs and my heart just wasn't cooperating. And I lost consciousness as a result and uh, took my last breath and as I took my last breath, that's when I left my body. And I remember um, as I'm leaving my physical body, floating up to the ceiling and uh, glancing down one more time um, at the paramedics that were coming to help me and knowing that that was me and yet I was up above at the same time with the real me, the spiritual soul, uh, watching all of this, these events unfold. And I let go. Um, and as soon as I chose to let go, that's when I was embraced by this incredible light in this tunnel um, that propelled me um, at an incredible force. It was so powerful and so magnificent, so loving. Um, I've never ever felt this kind of love before and it's really a challenge to put in words um, to describe the magnitude of the love um, and the embrace that I felt in this tunnel. And I effortlessly was propelled um, with force and got to the very top of the end of the tunnel where the light was. And in that very moment, I was delivered into the hands of God. And God and I stood together and God was on my right and heaven was behind us. And God and I stood together. And as we're looking out in front of us at the galaxy and all of the stars in front of us, I hear in my left ear, um, it was a vintage sounding projector and it sounded like the movie a movie was starting. And as soon as I heard the projector going in my left ear, I could see the stars that were just stars at one time all of a sudden lined up like a curtain. And the curtain opened slowly to the right. And I heard three, two, one, and it was a life review of Erica McKenzie on the projector screen. So it was God and I in a big movie theater in the galaxy. And that's when my life review began. And literally for me, um, the life review was everything from that day that I was born up until that day that I had taken my last breath and I died. And in this life review, um, I was shown everything from things like losing a tooth, losing my first tooth, um, you know, graduating from high school, any kind of awards that I had won um, in athletics or cheerleading, all of these things that were great accomplishments and they were really um, happy times, but they were significant things that man um, deems as significant, if you will, accomplishments. And um, as I'm watching all of these events unfold in chronolo chronological order, I'm actually reliving the event in that very moment as if it had just happened the first time. As we're observing it, I'm living it. And we finally get to the end on the day that I died and um, the movie screen turned off and then all of a sudden in front of me I knew to look down and it was this telepathic communication and as I had the knowing I needed to look down a pair in front of me a pair of eyeglasses and I've never worn glasses before and um, God said to put them on and I, I didn't know how I was going to put these glasses on because you have to understand these glasses weren't normal uh, pair of glasses that you would find here on earth these were the size of a vehicle and I'm thinking to myself how am I going to put these glasses on I just don't even know and I remember as soon as I had the thought of how am I going to do this it didn't even matter my hands were already drawing the glasses near to put them on my face and by the time that I got them to my face it wasn't even a problem they fit perfectly and I could see, I could really see. And then God said, now look. And as soon as he said, now look, again, I heard that vintage movie projector in my left ear. Three, two, one, the curtain opened again, life review of Erica McKenzie. So this was my second life review. 
and this time I didn't see at all what I had seen the first time in the life review. Uh, this time I could see. And everything that I saw in this life review, starting with the day that I was born until that day that I had died, was not at all what I had seen before. This time these were things that were important to God, not important to man. And they were not at all those um, accomplishments that I had talked about before. These were things like love and acts of kindness, things I couldn't even remember that I had done, um, befriending someone that everybody was mean to or, you know, a neglected um, an animal and I helped an animal or giving money to a homeless person when I didn't really have money to give, um, helping someone, you know, across the street, an elderly person. Every single action, word, thought, feeling was all about love. And we lived all of those series of events just like the first time, like it was happening for that very first time, I lived it again. And I felt so much unconditional love from God as we're, li we're reliving the series of events together. And we got to the day again that I died and the life review was over. And as soon as the life review was over, I remember knowing to look up. And so I looked up and this was the only time that I was able to see um, God in a physical form at all. And what it was, was it was his, from his shoulder um, down to his fingertips. And his arm was bigger than a semi-truck. And I remember him making the motion to look up like this, and that's what he did with his arm. And I looked as high as the highest stars, and I could barely see anymore. It was so high up in the air. And I watched and I looked in the palm of his hand and in the palm of his hand appeared a rock, a single, large, huge boulder, if you will, rock. And God and I watched together and I watched him let loose the rock. And the rock was falling and it was falling for such a long time, it seemed like just forever. And we're watching this rock fall together and I hear him say, I am the rock, I am the light. And when he said, I am the light, the rock was glowing. It was the most incredible, powerful light. It was so brilliant, in fact, almost blinding, but yet I was able to watch, keep watching it. And as the rock came right in front of us and it's still falling, in front of me appeared the largest body of water, largest than, larger than the largest ocean. If you can imagine, I couldn't even see the borders outstretched all around me. And we watched this rock fall and it fell into the ocean and it made one single ripple, just one. And we watched that single ripple grow together and that single ripple, it grew and it grew and it grew until you couldn't even see the borders of that ripple anymore. And God said to me, you are the rock, you are the light, you are the ripple that affects mankind. And I knew in that very moment with the two life reviews, what that meant and it wasn't, it wasn't about just me, Erica. It was about each and every one of us being that, that very rock when we're here on this journey, this earthly journey as humans, that we affect each and every person, even if we never meet them, just like that rock did in that water and the rippling effect. And I understood what that meant. And then as soon as we were done with the rippling effect, God told me to look again. And I remember looking to my right this time. And all of a sudden in front of me to my right, I look out and I'm like, those are shelves. And on these shelves, all of a sudden, they're brilliant white. And I mean, the colors, I can't even begin to describe in human words, the magnitude of the colors. But what I can tell you is the colors were so magnificent that they took on a life to be alive, if shelves, if you can imagine having a life, that they were alive, they were so full of life. And these shelves, on all these shelves, they went as high as the highest stars. And there was presents, gifts, if you will, like at Christmas, and not one gift was the same, not one. And I remember knowing to look out to the galaxy to my left, looking as far as I could past all the stars and planets, as far as it could go, and the shelves kept on going with gifts on them. And then I remember knowing to look to my right and I looked behind me to my right and I kept on looking as far as I could and the shelves kept on going with gifts. 
Not one gift was the same, and there were so many. And God said to me, Erica, in life, I give each and every one of you gifts, and they're all different because that is part of my plan. And he said, when you were born, I gave you the gift. I gave you the gift of patience, and I gave you the gift of beauty. And I, <laughs> I'm such a rule follower, I can't believe I argued with God. I didn't argue in a mean way, but when he said that, I stopped, I found myself communicating and thinking the thought, oh no, no, God, that can't be right. You didn't give me the gift of beauty because you see, I had made some very bad choices in my life. And that's what resulted in me taking that pill, that diet pill, and um, I never thought I was good enough. I, I was always trying to be everything that man thought was good enough, and instead, what happened is I stifled who God really made me to be. And he, he stopped me and he said, Erica, again, I gave you the gift of patience. And I gave you the gift of beauty. And in that very moment, I knew what that meant. That beauty came from within my heart. And it's an extension of all of us, the love that we carry in our hearts. And I looked at all of the gifts on the shelves and I knew how significant and beautiful and wonderful each and every one of these gifts that he gives all of us are. And in life, he said, he has more gifts for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. And all we have to do to get those gifts is ask. But then we have to be able to be quiet and listen to receive them. And that was something that I was told quite a few times in heaven. My experience in heaven, I feel like I was there for a lifetime and I learned so many lessons. God and I, we shared so many. But I want to share with you um, one of the lessons that I call the last lesson. And it was, in fact, the last lesson that God and I shared before I, I returned to earth. And this time, God had told me to look to my left. And I looked down to my left and all of a sudden appeared in front of me, Earth. And I'm watching and I'm looking at Earth and all of a sudden I'm noticing something strange about it. And I, I pay attention, I look a little bit closer and I see that the Earth was engulfed in flames everywhere, all over the planet, flames. And I began to panic because of the first it was the first moment that I thought about my family and I looked down and I'm thinking oh my gosh my kids are down there you know my my family my husband my my parents my sister and I, I was panicking because there's these flames and I looked at God and he was on my right and all of a sudden I knew to look down in front of me again and again appeared those glasses now the first time I had put the glasses on I could see what I didn't see before and already knowing that I'm seeing flames without glasses, I was really, I didn't want to put them on. I didn't want to see what I hadn't seen. I was afraid, but it didn't matter. As soon as I saw the glasses again, they were coming on me and I felt my hands drawing them to my face and I put them on. And as soon as they were on my face, I found myself looking. And God and I together looked again this time. And this time, I looked and all between each and every one of the flames all over the planet were these, these silver, silvery white things lifting off and I'm looking and I'm focusing and I noticed, oh my gosh, those are souls, those are people and they're fine, they're unscathed, they're, they're lifting off in between the flames unscathed and they were coming up behind us and going into the planet which was heaven. And I was so excited, I was so relieved, and I said, oh my gosh, God, look, 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 they're fine, they're okay, they're okay. And all of a sudden, I was so happy, I was so joyful, but at the same time, this was the very first time in my whole experience with God that I felt this incredible magnitude of sadness from God. And I said, no, 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 look, God, it's okay, they're not hurt, they're not hurt. And he looked at me and he said, Erica, it's free will. And I didn't understand what that meant at first because to me, everybody was, was fine. 
but he was crying for the ones that chose the separation from him. And I understood in that very moment how much God loves each and every one of us and wants that connection with each and every one of us. But he loves us so much that he lets us have that choice to have that connection. And then it was time for me to go. And I told God I didn't want to go. I, I, I couldn't imagine. I knew that I was home. And I had no desire to go back. Even though my family was there, I knew at the same time they would be fine. Everything would be okay. And God said, child, you're not staying. You work for me now, remember? And he said, before you go, I want to give you two more gifts. He said, I want you to take the gift of patience and beauty. And now I'm going to give you knowledge and wisdom. And I want you to be quiet and listen to the people that I put into your life. And then when you speak, you will change millions of people's lives. And there was no arguing. He sent me back with that. Out of my near-death experience, I learned that your uniqueness is your value. And your value, that's your contribution on this earthly journey. And it's the most empowering, beautiful, wonderful thing because each and every one of us are unique. And all the power that you need, all the answers, all the gifts they are within and those gifts, once you can identify those gifts and you grow those gifts, those beautiful gifts that make up your uniqueness and you use those gifts here on your earthly journey, that's your contribution. And then you, you take other people and their gifts and we're all different. That's part of God's plan. And we come together with our different, beautiful, amazing gifts. And we work together with those different gifts. And together, that's when we'll do great things. And we'll change the world.